So when we look at IPsec VPNs, this is what we'll be using for site-to-site -site connectivity. Another VPN type that's been getting a lot of publicity over the last couple years is SSL VPN. Well, we talked about yesterday why SSL is perceived to be a little bit better, and that's because it's more likely to work. It's more likely to work not because of the protocol itself, just because of the particular port numbers that it uses, TCP443, and if you're using DTLS, which we'll get into later, UDP443. With site-to-site -site connectivity between routers or routers and firewalls or firewalls and firewalls, you're gonna see IPsec is what's always going to be used. Now, what could vary based on some of the newer versions of code is the particular implementation of Ike. Ike version one is more common and it's a little bit older. Ike version two is the new one that they're deploying. So when we take a look at IPsec VPNs, you're gonna see that internet key exchange happens at the beginning. This is how we negotiate security associations. That's our goal. We're not really constructing tunnels through the internet. We're just building essays, which is an agreement on how to do crypto. This is actually what's gonna run on that UDP 500, and this is where we negotiate all the parameters for our tunnel. Once we build our essays, we can now encrypt traffic. That traffic can be encrypted or protected using AH, or alternatively, ESP. Now, if we dial into AH a little bit, they say here that it's mostly obsolete because while it provides encapsulation, it doesn't actually do encryption. So this can do the integrity check through hashing and it can provide origin authenticity, but it doesn't provide any encryption. ESP is gonna give us that encryption or privacy and additionally, it's gonna do the integrity checks. So AH, not very popular anymore. If we wanted to take a look at each of these, let's see. Okay, so I don't have a slide here for ESP versus AH, so let me just do a quick whiteboard. Let's get back here. So. AH is not commonly used. How is it any different? Well, we've got a router and we're gonna send clear text traffic into this router. We're gonna match some rules or a policy defined, that defines this traffic should be encrypted. So what happens is you'll have your TCP header, you'll have your IP header, and you'll have your five through seven payload back here. As it comes through the router, if you're doing encryption, which is normally why we do a VPN, this traffic is gonna be encapsulated and it's gonna be protected by a brand new header. So your ESP header is a new layer four header, and then you'll have an IP header, which is your new layer three header. The source IP address will be this router, the destination IP address will be the receiving router. So this IP header is used to get the traffic from here to here. If we look at layer four, it's an ESP header inside of that, you have encrypted payload that no one can see. So what ESP is really protecting is that payload. If you want to see how AH is a little bit different, what this guy's gonna do is once again, we've got our clear traffic coming in, hits our router. Again, here's that five through seven uh, payload. Here's our TCP header. Here's our IP header which has RFC 1918 addresses typically, our internal addressing. Here's router B at the other side. What AH does is it adds a new header here, just like ESP did. We have a new IP header here. This IP header, just as before, is sourced from router A, destined to router B over there on the right. What authentication header does that ESP does not is its integrity check includes the outer IP header. With ESP, this header is not protected. It obviously can't be encrypted because it has to be routed across the internet, but specifically, there's no integrity check with ESP. With AH, it does provide an integrity check, but there's no encryption back here. Does that make sense? Can you see why this isn't very popular? This is why AH exists, because it does something that ESP does not. 
and that is it provides an integrity check for the outer IP header. This is the one with public addressing. And the checksum basically goes from here to here. Everything is protected. With ESP, you have an integrity check, but it's from here to here. This part has no integrity. What does that mean? It means if the IP header was changed, we wouldn't know about it, which normally that's okay. What could happen here is that we could have natting occur. And if nat occurs for some reason, AH is, is going to complain. And that's just what I'm showing here is that AH simply is not a big fan of NAT. And then if we take a look at what's happening with ESP, ESP will function just fine with that outer IP address being NATed because the integrity check isn't there. How are you guys doing so far? Good, okay, awesome. So that's AH versus ESP. AH does have some additional functionality, mostly obsolete because most people don't care about it. So let's get to the pieces that we do care about. Ike is Internet Key Exchange. Its job is to build security associations. You'll have Ike uh, security associations and IPsec security associations. So let's talk about how that actually works. Um, let's see how we're doing on time. Pretty good for right now, good. So uh, router A on the left, router B on the right. We've got a user here, and this user's initiating a connection to a server that's located at headquarters. When the interesting traffic comes into the router, the router sees it and goes, okay, this is something that I need to encrypt. So when this INT here just stands for interesting. It's something that should be protected. When we see that, we need to set up a VPN tunnel across the internet from the branch office to headquarters. The first thing that we need to do is run phase one. There are two different phases in Ike version one, which is what we're gonna learn this afternoon. We have phase one, and we have phase two. Phase one, I'm sorry, phase two. Our goal here for phase one is to be able to create an ISACAMP essay, an ISACAMP security association. Our goal for phase two is to create an IPsec security association. So let's talk about what those are actually used for. The phase one security association is going to be used for management purposes. So in other words, when router A wants to talk to router B about what's happening with this tunnel, maybe we need to negotiate new keys. Maybe um, it's been become unresponsive and for some reason he's not responding. If router A and router B want to communicate across uh, to, about the, the health status or about management va uh, variables that have to do with this tunnel, all that happens using our ISACAMP Security Association. Think of this as a management channel. Going way back into history, if you remember ISDN, uh, BRIs or the basic rate interface, you would have two data channels that you could use for communication and one management channel that was just used for line diagnostics. This is very much the same as that old classic ISDN BRI. Let me show you how. The phase one ISACAMP Security Association is the first thing that gets created. So in other words, we need to set up a management tunnel before anything else. The interesting traffic comes into the router. Router A looks at his VPN configuration and goes, oh, this traffic needs to be sent to headquarters. I can reach it by talking to that public interface. So what happens is over UDP 500, we're going to negotiate an ISACAMP security association. This uses something called a policy set 
And our policy set defines how we want to secure our management session. How do we authenticate the other router? What Diffie-Hellman group do we use? What encryption algorithm do, do we use? What hashing algorithm? And what's our key lifetime? All this goes into a policy set, and we need to agree with the other side. If we have matching parameters with router B over there, we will successfully complete Ike phase one, which is just negotiation of parameters, and we will achieve an ISA camp security association. This is a bi-directional security association, which is an agreement on how to do crypto. And it is used for management functions. How are you guys doing so far? So far so good, I hope? Awesome. So this is the goal of phase one. The next thing that happens is we move to phase two. Our goal here is to create IPsec security associations. So once phase one completes successfully, now we can move to phase two. What you'll use for phase two is normally going to be a transform set. Your transform set could be placed inside of another logical construct and be given a name like an IPsec profile, but it's still, in my mind, a transform set. And this describes how we secure end user data. So when computer A on the left wants to talk to server B on the right, how is it going to be protected? And it's this that protects the user data. It's not the management that you saw there in phase one, the two routers talking about the tunnel. This is actually moving end user data. So in phase two, we want to make sure that we've got matching IPsec profiles or matching transform sets between the two routers. If we have matching security parameters, what's going to happen is we'll come up with two new security associations. So there will be two of these and one of these. Your ISACAMP essay is bi-directional. Your IPsec essays are unidirectional. So what happens is you'll have an outbound essay for encrypted traffic from router A to router B. And you'll have an inbound essay for traffic coming from router B to router A. So this is your outbound and this is your inbound. So for one VPN tunnel, and assuming I've only got one particular flow in my crypto ACL, I would have three security associations. One management. Our second will be outbound data. Our third will be inbound data. Does that all make sense? And we can validate these with the show crypto ISACAMP essay and then show crypto IPsec essay. And just realize you'll see multiple IPsec essays based on how many lines that are in your crypto ACL. If you've got eight lines there, you're gonna have you know, multiple entries for each of those lines. So this is what your Ike v1 VPN looks like. All we're building are security associations, which is an agreement upon how to do crypto. Once that essay is built, we can actually see them and what's going to be associated with each one of these is called a security parameter index, or SPI. So if I was to use Wireshark, and I was to sniff this data right here, what protocol would I see at layer three? Can anybody tell me? These are underhanded softball pitches. At layer three, it's going to be IP. What am I going to see at layer four? If I'm sniffing with Wireshark. Not TCP. That might be there if it's an SSL VPN. What's protecting our data? Talked about this yesterday. ESP, perfect, guys. Does ESP have port numbers? No, but it does have a security parameter index. All the packets that go out are going to have a, the same SPI, let's say 39147. All the packets coming in are going to have a different SPI. So what does it look like when packets come in off the wire? 
we've got this packet coming in, we can look at the security parameter index on it. The security parameter index, if it's coming in, will have an SPI that matches this IPsec SA. If you do a show crypto IPsec SA, you're going to see things like AES-128 was negotiated. Maybe MD5 was negotiated. You'll see the key here. You won't see it, but the router knows it for decrypting that data. So your security association contains the agreed upon recipe for how to do crypto. And it also tethers the SPI, which Wireshark can see in the ESP header. And the other place you can verify this as an engineer is a show crypto IPsec SA. You'll notice an inbound and outbound SA for each entry in your crypto ACLs. And each of these is going to have SPIs. So as you have multiple VPNs, say that your headquarters over here on the right has got tunnels coming in from nine or 10 different offices, you could actually have different encryption algorithms with different offices. Ideally, we wouldn't want that. We'd want the same capabilities everywhere. But let's say that you did. Each VPN tunnel has separate security associations. Each security association has a different security parameter index, just a 32-bit random number. Almost looks like a serial number, not real intuitive. But as packets are coming in, and we look at that ESP header, we can go, oh, these packets get decrypted this way, these packets get decrypted this other way. So you can actually, as an engineer, look with Wireshark and look with SSH, you know, log into your router or firewall and look at those essays and actually line up the SPIs and go, oh, cool, this is how it actually all ties together. So a lot of this seems pretty cryptic, not in the sense of encryption, but just um, non-tangible. Like there's a lot that's going on, but I totally don't get it. But this board behind us, it shows us everything that's happening with the VPN. I see interesting traffic. I talk to the other router using ISACAMP on UDP 500 and I go, let's build a VPN. The first thing we need is a management session. Once our management session gets established, um, we have an ISACAMP essay. If it doesn't get established, if it doesn't complete quick mode, we go, well, something doesn't match. Let's look at our policy sets and make sure all the parameters match. If we do complete phase one successfully, we move to phase two, where we build our IPsec data essays. This is what's going to move end user traffic. Now, for that to happen, we have to have matching transform sets on both sides. Newer VPN types, like FlexVPN, will use IPsec profiles. Uh, you'll see this in DMVPN, you'll see this in virtual tunnel interfaces, you'll see this in a number of places. An IPsec profile just contains a transform set. A transform set just says how to protect the data. It might have options there like AES-256 and SHA-2. That would just be this is how we want to protect data between the two sites. If it matches on both sides, you get a tunnel. If it doesn't match on both sides, you don't get a tunnel. Just that easy. Um, and I guess if you wanted to come up and verify it, show crypto ISACAMP essays, show crypto IPsec essays, if you see the security associations there, it means your tunnel should be up. You should see packets in and packets out. If you don't, those are the types of places that we'd look, your policy sets and your transform sets. How are you guys doing so far? 